Hello, Alan. Hi, how are you, Kenny? I'm really, really good. And I'm so excited for this conversation, um, especially because we are here to celebrate and honor AAPI Heritage Month. That's right. So um, we wanted to have a conversation with you because you have been in this industry, you have been part of SFAR, um, and you have also been such an amazing advocate for social justice and fair housing for decades. And um, so I want to take it a little bit back and ask you first, uh, when, did you get, when did you first get into this profession? Well, I was first licensed uh, as a real estate agent in 1964. Wow. They allowed one-year-olds to get their license at that time. <laughs> so uh, it's been a long time. Yeah. But I, I wasn't as active in those early years, but uh, later on I did get more active. Okay, and when, when about did you get more active? Well, probably uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, I okay. uh, joined the San Francisco Association of Realtors and uh, I got active in sales. And what was the impetus for you to actually get into real estate in the, in the, mid, in the mid 60s? Well, um, I graduated from college and my father asked me what I wanted to do uh, yeah. for the rest of my life. And uh, as any 20 year old would say, I have no idea. <laughs> so he said, get your license, <clears throat> join my office and you know, figure out what you want to do. And so here we are in 2021 and I'm still struggling to find out what I want to do. You'll soon find out, I think so. <laughs> I, I, have, I have faith. <laughs> um, so when you got into, start, when you started doing sales a little bit more intentionally in the late 60s, early 70s, um, I would love for you to paint a picture for us of what it actually looked like to be an AAPI realtor at that time. Well, actually it was fairly lonely as far as being a, an Asian. Um, yeah. There was a few brokers and whatnot in Chinatown. Yeah. Uh, there was no Asian brokers or offices uh, west of Venice Avenue. They started growing in the late 60s and early 70s when uh, the Chinese used, moved to the Chinatown West or Clement Street. They opened up in Clement and then later they moved to Noriega and Terrebelle Street later. But uh, being a AAPI realtor in those early years, it was fairly lonely. Yeah. And what was it like? doing business? Well, Were you able to do business? Yeah, I was able to do business and uh, fortunately I, I did well. Yeah. But um, being a young realtor, whether I was Asian or not, you're sort of naive. Yeah. I suffered a lot of discrimination. Um, I would submit offers or I'd call up to find out if I could show a property and they would say, I'm sorry, but it's sold. And of course they'd have open houses later. Mm -hmm. I would submit offers and I would get no response. Yeah. Um, I would ask if I could present the offer and they would say, uh, no, the seller doesn't want to be presented. So uh, a lot of those things happened. Uh, I was a little naive, I was young, but I just kept going to the next one and the next one. I think a lot had to do with the uh, lessons that my father taught me about, he was an old time, he was born in San Francisco, so he was an American citizen, but he was old time Japanese. And he just felt, take it and go on to the next one. Uh, there's a Japanese term called gaman, which means face up. Yeah. So uh, I just forgot that one and went on to the next one. Yeah. And fortunately, uh, people accepted me later and uh, the rest is history. Yeah. You know, I'm always so curious about this notion of face it head on, just do the thing, just go, 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 don't worry about it. And I, and I can't help but think about how immigrants, a lot of folks of color, do that and how hard it is to do and, and the impact that that can have on us as on, on human beings to have to face constant discrimination, constant harm, and just push through it. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, that is so much of the immigrant experience. That's so much of the AAPI experience um, and yeah I mean it's just it's just it strikes me that that is just like the common refrain and and has always contextualized how we've shown up in this industry and in so many other industries um, but how hard that can be right right this the stories that you hear about the immigrant population from uh, Asia the, the Japanese coming in and being incarcerated during World War II the Chinese with the uh, railroad workers yeah 
uh, the, all the terrible discrimination that the Southeast Asians faced when they came into the United States. Uh, the stories are, there's thousands and thousands of stories that have to be told. And fortunately, during the AAPI uh, Heritage Month, a lot of these stories are going to be told. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, my dad, I don't know if you know this, but my dad is also a realtor and um, has been a realtor in San Francisco for over 50 years. Really? What's his name? His name is Peter Gong. And um, he stopped doing, he, st he started doing sales in the, oh gosh, in the early 70s. And, um, and then was doing sales primarily for the, I think he was probably about 20 years. Um, and has had a little brokerage called PG Investments in the sunset. Um, and he's told me so many amazing stories uh, about what it was like for him. And um, so for me, as the son of a realtor, I grew up in real estate. And um, it was always really, really important to me as, as a realtor to understand where I came from and to see myself as part of a lineage, mm -hmm. part of a professional lineage of Asian American realtors, but also pers personally, because literally it is in my bloodline that I am a second generation realtor. And um, so I'm curious to know, especially now that I didn't actually know that your dad um, was in real estate um, <clears throat> and now your son right. is in real estate. So I'm curious to know for you what it feels like to be part of this now multi-generational lineage um, of people who have served our communities um, in San Francisco and the Asian American community. Um, specifically when it comes to real estate and helping people access real estate and um, buy and sell real estate. There's a really uh, touching story about my father. Um, after World War II, yeah. the Japanese Americans returned to the West Coast after the incarceration in the uh, American prisons. He first started selling life insurance because the Japanese desperately wanted to get some security. But later, as the Japanese got uh, established, they needed housing. So my father got a real estate license. And in order to be successful, you have to join the local real estate association. So he applied to the San Francisco Board of Realtors at that time. And he was denied membership solely on the fact that he was a uh, Japanese American. Now, remember, he was born in San Francisco. So he was an American citizen. He had two, three children at that time. and. Uh, he was just denied membership. Three years later, he reapplied. And they gave him membership, but they only gave him an associate membership. They wouldn't even give him a full membership. Yeah. So fast forward to uh, 1990, I was installed as president of the San Francisco Association of Realtors. I've told this story many times before, but I, my father was in the audience. Yeah. And I told the story about my father's struggles. Yeah. And uh, I looked down at him, and uh, I immediately froze. I mean, uh, there was a giant lump on my throat. I, I could barely talk. I, didn't, I think I stopped breathing, yeah. really. To see the look in his face was uh, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And the, the topping of the story is that in 1992, I believe, the San Francisco Association of Realtors gave my father lifetime membership in wow. the association. So that was really wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am curious to know more about what it felt like for you. Tell me more about that lump in your throat, standing up there, being installed as the first AAPI president of our association. Tell me a little bit more of what that felt like and what that meant to you. Well, I, I, hopefully I was elected uh, as president of the association due to my merits, not because I was Asian. Yep. I didn't run on a platform of uh, being an Asian American. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, at the board meeting, uh, I was nominated from the floor. The, the, at that time, uh, the executive director had a person he wanted to have as president. Yeah. So then the, pres the current president opened up the floor for nominations, and this person nominated me. And I was absolutely shocked. As <laughs> so anyway, they, uh, the board, we had a s debate, or I guess not a debate. We had to get up and make our statements. And uh, I was elected. I was absolutely floored. I, I, I couldn't believe it because at that time, this gentleman, uh, a Caucasian broker, he was the owner broker of one of the larger real estate offices in San Francisco. And uh, like, you know, at that time, 40 or 50 agents was a lot. 
And here, my father and I were the, the two-man office in Japantown. Yeah. So uh, becoming president was quite an accomplishment. And I, it's truly an honor. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, at that point, you had already been practicing for, for over a decade. Oh yeah, more than a decade. More than a right. decade, I mean, you know, yeah. Um, and so I'm curious, especially, I mean, you had put in the work, but to be the first AAPI president we have so many conversations right now about representation really mattering and how important it is to see a diversity of people at all levels of our industry, at all levels of our association and organization. So I, so in retrospect, now that you were the first, now that sort of that title of first AAPI president has been bestowed upon you, um, and now that we have had multiple Asian AAPI presidents since right um any thoughts or reflections in in today from that moment in 1991 well in my year as president elect um i took it as my mandate yeah. to get more people of color into the association yeah. and women yeah. um, i was active in the women's council at that time because yeah. i knew some women who were active in women's council they asked me to uh, join in and, and help out so I took it as my mandate to bring them into the association. Yeah. I looked at the roster of uh, committee members, leadership, and even committee members, and there was hardly any people of color involved. I was the first elected di director of color in the association, which is crazy because you figure in San Francisco with the largest yeah. Chinatown yeah. at that time in the world, there was no uh, Chinese uh, people in the uh, leadership roles. So uh, during my year as uh, president, I was able to fill slots on the board of directors. I brought in three uh, people of color, the first female Chinese realtor board of director. I found this one gentleman by the name of Pablo Wong. And I figured I got two for the price of one. I got a Hispanic and I got a Chinese. Yeah. So uh, I encouraged other people to join committees. So yeah. we increased our membership quite a bit. Yeah. So I think the uh, association was happy with that. But yeah. probably the, the most important thing that I did during my year was I created this thing called the Asian Council. Now, to be honest with you, the San Francisco Association at that time was a very unwelcoming, very white organization. Uh, so I created the Asian Council to make it more welcoming for Asians to come into this office. I think the Asian Council really did a lot to help promote uh, the population of Asians into the uh, association. And it was the genesis of the Asian Real Estate Association of America, ARIA, yeah. because th we replicated that and made it into a national uh, situation. Yeah. And now it's one of the largest uh, communities of color organizations, trade organizations in our, in our uh, It is our the, uh, the Asian Real Estate Association of America is the largest Asian membership organization in the United States. Yeah. I mean, that's really saying something. Yeah. And we're only in our 18th year. Yeah. So we have 17,000 plus members, wow. 42 chapters across the United States and two in Canada. And we've gone even into Asia and we've signed MOUs with the Chinese Real Estate Association, two organizations and real estate organizations in Japan. And we're uh, negotiating with Korea, Thailand and Vietnam. Yeah. It's amazing. It is. It's amazing to also see how our industry now has so many more AAPI members due to a lot of this work in the community, mm -hmm. right? Like it actually works, right? You create, you create pathways and you create systems and you create processes to welcome people into our industry and then they show up. I mean, it's, it's amazing to think about, you know, when I started six years ago in this industry, I was able to come into an organization, into an industry that I saw people that looked like me practicing real estate. Right. Um, not only f from my dad, but also I saw peers of mine that actually reflected the population of San Francisco. Right. And how powerful that is um, when we think about also how inextricably tied home ownership, how in inextricably tied real estate is to our experience as citizens in a city, in a country, and how important that is. So um, I wanna know, I have a couple more questions. 
Um, what do you want today's generation of realtors, the folks that are in their 20s, the folks that are just starting in their career, what do you want them to know about what has happened in our association and in our industry when it comes to social justice issues and fair housing issues? Well, that's, that's quite a question. Um, I think that <clears throat> they have to know the past so they don't repeat it, for yeah. one. Yeah. They have to know the past so they can uh, go on into the future. There's been so much progress over the years. Uh, when I started in 1960, uh, the Fair Housing Act and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and 68 were signed. Yeah. Those were blockbuster, monumental acts of Congress. Uh, unfortunately, they, they didn't have enough teeth in the law. Yeah. Uh, but it did establish a baseline that people of color should have equal rights, uh, not only in housing, but in a lot of other areas. I think the new realtors or new agents should get the book, The Color of Law, by Richard Rothstein. I'm not selling his book, but that is an incredible, yeah. incredible book. Yeah. Uh, I've been involved with social justice and uh, fair housing issues and diversity for 40, 50 years. Yeah. But reading that book, I learned so much. I never realized that there was so much discrimination, so much systemic racism, the issues of steering and uh, all those other things are unbelievable. Even on the governmental level, it was uh, quite eye-opening. Yeah. And you know, I also wanted to mention that uh, going into the next direction, the president of the National Association of Realtors uh, a few months ago offered an apology for the terrible actions of the National Association of Realtors regarding fair housing and diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, that was quite a statement. Yeah. And uh, under uh, Vince Malta's uh, leadership as president of the National Association of Realtors, Vince Malta, former president of the San Francisco Association of Realtors, yeah. uh, he made changes in the code of ethics so that you can't use hurtful language, uh, discriminatory language in any of your marketing or any statements. Yeah. Uh, that was a blockbuster move. Yeah. And also, um, at the California Association of Realtors level, uh, President Dave Walsh, the president, current president, also offered a similar apology for the actions of the California Association in yeah. regards to fair housing laws and whatnot. Yeah. Um, it was really an embarrassment for uh, CAR and NAR in the 40s, 50s, and 60s that uh, they fought against fair housing. But now, yeah. as you mentioned, things are changing. The younger uh, agents uh, are fortunate that now we have a, uh, hopefully a clear path for fair housing and diversity so that all people of color, well, everybody has an equal opportunity uh, to obtain the American dream of home ownership. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what are you most excited about when you think of all of these different conversations that are happening around social justice and around fair housing and around this energy and this momentum when it comes to organizationally so many people showing up and, and sharing their commitment to fair housing. Yeah. What are you most excited about? What do you want to see next? Actually, I, you, the word momentum is really appropriate because now we do have the momentum. The National Association of California and the San Francisco Association yeah has the momentum to move forward. We have been talking the talk for many years, yeah. and now we are gonna walk the walk. At the California Association of Realtors and San Francisco, uh, we've established uh, fair housing diversity committees, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, really create a level playing field. Yeah. What would you like to see most tangibly happen with our industry and with our association? Well, the most tangible thing is if a person of color, uh, African American, Asian, whatever, can walk into a real estate office and be accepted as an equal, to go into the um, uh, bank and get a loan on an equal basis, yeah. that would be the objective. Yeah. Where I don't think that Asians or people of color are ex wanting some advantage. They just want an equal opportunity. And. Um... I wonder if we can ask some fun questions. Okay, uh, when you think of AAPI Heritage Month, when I think of AAPI Heritage Month, I think of celebration and joy, um, as well as history and thinking about the past and grappling with some of the um, real struggles, right? But I also think of celebration and joy. 
Um, so uh, when you think of San Francisco, what are some of your favorite AAPI restaurants? <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. Top three. The top, top three. three. Yeah. Oh boy, I would get in trouble, I think. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, if I had to eat one food for yeah. the rest of my life, it probably would be Chinese. Yeah. That's because there's such diversity. Yeah. I mean, from the North China to the South China, Absolutely. there's just yeah. completely different, yeah. but wonderful food. Yeah. Um, the seafood and all yeah. the vegetables and the healthy eating, it, it's, it's absolutely yeah. wonderful. But then again, I also love Japanese yeah. food. I mean, yeah. sushi and ramen and udon and yeah. tempura. I'm getting hungry. This is, um, this is a very diplomatic response, Alan. <laughs> but I need some answers. <laughs> I need some answers about real restaurants. <laughs> and you need to stake a claim and say, who are some really amazing restaurants which are some amazing restaurants that are well you know favorites? i can't claim to be an expert in chinese food because yeah. i'm not chinese yeah. but there's a, the one in the embarcadero center called harbor village harbor view harbor, harbor view yeah, harbor yeah view. Harbor view. they have wonderful dim sum yeah, yeah 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 and a lot of the neighborhood uh, chinese restaurants yeah. along clement street and Terravel and noriega yeah. they all have wonderful food yeah. so and then in terms of japanese food where should we be where should we be, we, we be going from someone who has been around and loving Japantown, especially <laughs> for decades. Okay, for for this one, I really have to be diplomatic. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> if I <laughs> if I go back to Japantown and I find out that I endorse one over the other, I'd be really in trouble. So, yeah, you know, like. the, one, one thing, uh, the ramen has been so popular. Lately. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's six or seven restaurants that are serving ramen in Japantown. Yeah. Now, I am actually more of a fan of udon, yeah. which is completely different than ramen. I think it's a little more sophisticated, a little more pure, uh, but it's just my personal preference. Yeah. And I'm going to just shout out one of my favorite places in Japantown. Not for, not for food necessarily, but for sweets and desserts. Um, Benkyoro. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's still one of my favorite places any single time that I can that I can have a chance to, to go get some mochi. You know, I have a sad story to tell you. They're retiring at the end of this year. <gasps> no. They, they are the second, oh. second oldest business in Japan. Now, they've been in business for over 100 years. Yeah. And at the end of the year, they're closing up shop. Alan, I'm curious to know, when we think about AAPI Heritage Month, what are the ways that you like to really celebrate it? In addition to remembering history, and speaking about all of these things, what are some other ways that you personally like to celebrate this month or honor this month? Well, like you mentioned, uh, I normally take the uh, AAPI Heritage Month as a celebration of, yeah. of the Asian cultures. Yeah. We go to various events to enjoy the Indian dancing or the Korean uh, foods and the Filipino uh, bamboo dancing. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. But I think now in today's society, we have to, as you mentioned earlier, look back and see what's happened to the Asian community and how it's been progressing and uh, how we're going to move forward. Yeah. I, I think the work that SFAR is doing with uh, your committee is, is absolutely wonderful. And uh, I hope that everybody watches this video. I hope everybody joins the, uh, your committee. And uh, yes. I hope that uh, we get things actually done, concrete yeah. things. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much, Alan. We, uh, we all appreciate not only this time that you've shared with us, but the decades and decades of service <laughs> that you have truly, truly bestowed upon, um, upon our industry, upon our association, upon our community. It's, it's, it's folks like you that are so inspirational and, um, and really help me as someone who's relatively new to all of this, um, see that there is a path to um, fighting for justice for the long term and really, really committing to this work over the course of a lifetime. And so I thank you so much for all of that. Oh, I thank and you for the oppor opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. <laughs>